What's up my comic book brothers and my comic book sisters from another mister. Today we're going to do a comic book full story review of Gunslinger Spawn Brutal and Violent Story issues number 7 through 12 brought to you by Rated Comics. Before we get into the content, timestamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue. Also, link in description if you wish to add any of the comic books to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to this channel. As you guys can see, we have Gunslinger Spawn issues number 7 through 12 popping up on your screen right here. That way you can get a look at all the variant covers and decide for yourself which one or all of them if you like. If you're tuning in for the first time and you haven't watched Gunslinger Spawn Brutal first story arc, card is up top and link in description. You guys gotta watch that video before you watch part two, which is this one right here. But if you have watched it, hey, let's get into the content. We begin this new story arc where previously in Gunslinger number six, after evening of hospitality at Clown's secret base and turns violent quickly and in a gangster kind of way, Gunslinger is back on the road searching from those from his past. And we see that he meets a lady along the way that's trying to teach him how to catch a hitch. And you know, they have the history together, they're flooded with one another, and you can tell they probably skinny dipped or two before. Maybe not, but she ends it with, you know, I gotta go, I think you're good looking. I'm headed to the river to clean up, but you're more than welcome to come join me on skinny dipping if you like to. He's gotta pass on her offer because there's a destination he needs to get to. He catches a hitch with the truck driver, but the drive is hours later and he drops him off in the middle of nowhere. And the driver is like, I feel kind of bad leaving you right here, but this is where you want to go. He's like, yeah, thanks for the hospitality, my friend, but I got my reasons. And those reasons include returning to a place where he recently tangled with a female called Dakota and where the clown transformed himself. So we're going back to the roots over here. He come to this area because it was a place he used to know well. When he was a boy, these woods also served him well when he needed a refuge from his abusive father's fist. It's also where he left a few of his belongings, like his rifles, his ride, and those wolves too. You can call them his friends. So he greets the wolves, good to see you, but I can't stay, got a few things to take care of. And then a voice from the distance, like, well, who's gonna take care of your wolves then? The stranger's voice sounds like a man that smokes three packs of cigarettes a day, but more unnerving is that he somehow didn't make a noise getting this close to Gunslinger. Can I help you with something, says Gunslinger Spawn? And he just grins as if nothing. That sinister kind of grin, like, he don't know what you can help me with, boy. But Gunslinger's like, all right, I'm on my way then. And this brother's like, nah, man, your pets don't want you to go. That's what you're trying to tell me? Gunslinger don't say nothing. He just mounts his bike and gets ready to leave. And he's like, I said, your pets want you to stay. And he throws a boulder at his bike and his brother transforms into a, a man wolf. 1,200 pounds of monstrosity with fearlessness that drives the wolves now obedient to him. For tonight, we feast, says the man wolf. Their bloodlust trained on Gunslinger, and he already threw a massive bolt at his bike, but Gunslinger defends himself. This creature isn't what's foremost in his mind, and this brother just lunges at him and bites him in the arm. Instead, there's an anger that started to dwell inside of Gunslinger, one driven by the same damn question he's been asking himself since he arrived in the century. How? He keeps repeating that same question. How is it that these enemies are able to track him down? The Dark Angels, Dakota, Clown. It's almost like they got a GPS up his ass and they know exactly where his ass is gonna be. So they fight and they go at it. And Javier's like, okay, you wanna play? Let's play, let's do this. And he challenges inner strength to defeat the beast, to fight the beast. And his rage is what unleashes against his eight foot man wolf. And with every slash of his Bowie knife, he keeps asking himself, how, how the F are you fighting me? How are they doing this? And he slashes him in his head. But as in any closely fought battle, there's always a time when one needs to worry about what's staring at them in the face. Besides his man wolf right here. Gunslick has been around animals his whole life. He knows when they're injured, bleeding, or cornered, they'll defend themselves on sheer instincts with every means necessary to survive. And as this beast's eyes turn brighter, so do Gunslinger spawns. Guess what? Until the symbol on his chest begins to burn with flames so white hot, it tears away at his flesh. And I don't know what it is, it's some kind of mystical power, but both warriors for a brief moment attempt to catch their breath. And Man Wolf was like, they want you to walk away from this. They say they need you alive. So remember tonight because next time I'll be in charge and I won't walk away until you're dead. This will be the last time Carnivore lets his prey escape. And with that, 
He disappears into like a majestic display of magic that blankets the night sky, leaving in his wake a giant burnt symbol once he's seen before, a mark seared in the gunslinger spawn's memory long ago. It's a message from those he was hunting in the 19th century. And that's referencing Gunslinger Spawn issue number one. But you can also check out that issue in the playlist or at the first story arc of Gunslinger Spawn if you haven't caught up. With that being said, we continue on with the review. Gunslinger goes up digging it because it was for exactly for times like this that he bored weapons in a handful of spots. Because soon he may be in need of each and every one of them. He thought he wanted to find a way back to his own period, but that symbol, the one scorched in the grass, signifies that the worst of his enemies may also also have been pulled through the time rip that brought him here. If that's true, he'll need to do two things. One, he needs to prepare himself in any way possible with as much firepower as he can. And two, he needs to heal himself because that burning sensation that he got earlier from whatever the heck that was, he's obviously more than just a man wolf. He goes himself into an ice pondy water as he heals himself. As he attempts to ease away that pain, he knows trying to go at it alone won't get him what he wants. So he needs help. So he goes to a bar. My kind of guy. I need help in life. I'm going to a roadhouse bar, baby. Woo! And guess who's there? Jessica Priest gazing, locked in on the mirror behind the bartender's too because she's eyeing a target. Who? We don't know. Guys try to talk to her, screw off. I've been there before. What guy hasn't approached a girl at the bar and gets told to screw off? It happened to me. Come on now. So he approaches Jessica Priest. Hey, darling, you need company? And she's like, oh, no, I'm not interested. Not yet, but you will be. He introduces himself and tells her, we met before under different circumstances, under different costumes. You gave me a motorcycle. And that's referencing Spawn issue number 313. And she's like, Oh, you? How'd you find me? Ne never mind. We, we ain't got time for that. This isn't a good time. And he's like, look, I'm just looking for a few things. And she's like, I'm working right now. You're about to blow my cover. So leave. Javier is like, okay, under one condition I'll leave. Tell me where I can find Spawn, the one you call Simmons. And she's like, man, that'll take time. And like I said, I don't have time for that. I'm undercover. So their chatter is interrupted by this brother right here that tries to, you know, be Captain Saber, Jessica Priest. And like, hey, looks like this man is bothering you. You need, you need help? No, I'm good. Then I'll be over at that table behind me. But, you know, I would love to dance with you later. Perhaps we can grab a dance later, you know? And Javi's like, you deaf or just stupid boy? She says she's good. And this hulking man stops dead in his tracks. And she's just embarrassed. Like, why are you doing this? Not now. I'm trying to be undercover. And you putting my business out there like that. Well, girl, you're in a roadhouse with black leather outfit. How else you not going to get your business out like that? But jokes aside, this brother goes up to Javier like, you looking for trouble, mister? Be more than happy to oblige you with that. Depends, mofo. Though, I only like to fight men. You think you can find one for me? <laughs> I love this kind of pettiness right there. And she tries to break it up and Javi's like, I'm just gonna blow smoke in his face. Cause that's what I do. And we already know, unless this guy is like a demon or something underneath, Gunsling is gonna take him out really quick. Who is this guy? And Jessica's like, oh, he's just an ex-boyfriend, had one too many drinks, that's all. We were just leaving. So I ain't gonna get that dance? I'm afraid not. That's what she tells the guy. Then run away, you little freaking coward, to hide behind her skirt. Don't wanna see you around or your whore girlfriend again. And that just sets Gunslinger off and stops him in his track. He's like, what did you call her? And I hate to do this, but that is literally where this issue ends, literally. That's the end of this issue. Honestly, yes, I, I dug it. I love this new threat, whoever's hunting Gunslinger spawn. Definitely kind of a tease of a cliffhanger. I mean, but then again, perhaps this hulking guy might be a demon. Look at that sinister shadowy panel when he gets all pissed that he's not gonna get his dance, you know what I mean? It was definitely a fun read, but hey, you know, we just gotta go along for the ride and just get tagged along with it. Before we begin the issue, we're gonna do a little summary of the previous issue. After the battle with the mysterious werewolf known as Carnivore, Gunslinger realizes that not only are some of his enemies from the past are still alive, but they know he is here in the present. So here, in a location far away, him and Jessica Priest are laying on the ground, reminiscing what happened in the previous issue. Why did you do that, says Jessica. Well, you heard what he called you. I didn't like the way he was calling you. And Jessica's like, I know, but at the same time, I was trying to fuse the situation. But instead, you crept 
all over my hard work, I was undercover. You know how long I spent on that target? Well, months, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it. Just a Caprice is like, I don't think you do. That's the problem. And he's like, man, this place is all new to me. Why can't we just keep things simple, you know? I just want to keep it simple. And plus, I was protecting your honor. She responds like, I can take care of myself, and I don't need you taking care of my honor. Maybe there, little lady, you're just being sensitive, says she. <laughs> Gunslinger, you know? And don't you dare patronize me, says Jessica Priest. I don't know what that means. I'm just gonna put on these glasses, girl. What you think of my looks, you know? So we go into this flashback of what happened previously at the bar. I love a bar fight. Actually, I, from a distance, I do. But <laughs> don't judge me for that internet. It's just fun. From a distance, I mean. So Gunslinger goes into this monologue. I ain't never backed down from a fight, especially when it involves some of the bastards I've been hunting. So I got a couple questions buzzing in my brain. Like, why were they there in the first place? And second, when are you bringing me to spawn? Gunslinger wants Jessica to bring in a spawn as we know from previous issues and we will be reminded of that why later. Because every day Gunslinger spends in his era, things get more complicated and he likes his thing simple. And she's like, yeah, simple fits your personality as we go back into the present. And take those damn glasses off, Gunslinger. You look ridiculous. You had no right killing my target. Girl, he killed himself. So we go back to the flashback at the bar. And besides, you don't know the history be behind that man. And this man is Wilbur. He's with this chick. He sees Gunslinger and his servant or his assistant about to go down. He's like, gentlemen, please. Ain't no reason to fight, right? And then she spot tries to, you know, defuse the situation. Says, hey, forgive my friend Wilbur. He can be a bit high strung. My sincere apologies. I apologize if he's insulted you and your fine ass lady. <laughs> she didn't say that. I just thought I added in there. That's the caffeine ticking it. That's the caffeine kicking in, you know what I mean? We'll leave, let you enjoy the evening. Sorry, that guy's name is not Wilbur. Wilbur is a big guy who's the assistant. So he tells Wilbur to pull the car around and he's like, right away, Mr. Silverton. And, and Gunster's like, Silverton, you wouldn't be the same one that lived in Sioux City a while back, would you? But the way he says it, he's not supposed to know that. And Silverton's like, mm. You ain't supposed to know that, but his look says it all even without saying it. And Gunslinger's like, look, no need to answer. I see it on your face, a surprised look, how you survive all those decades. Curious though, exactly, how many native women and children you, did you slaughter back then? Ooh, Harvey, please, why are you going there? He's looking for a fight, but the past is the past. Silverton's like, mm, too bad what happened to Amy. She was a fine looking woman. Pisses him off, pulls out the gun, Puts it at his head, Javier's reaction ignites tension on both sides. Some serve Silverton, others revile him. Turning that moment into an epic bar brawl. And back in the present, Jessica Capri's like, Amy, something something changed in you when you said that name, Amy. Who is she? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, really, says Jessica Priest. My whole mission goes to shit, and you're getting and you're getting all coy now? Come on, that's not fair. Who is she? Javi gets pissed as his eyes go green. He stands up, he's like, I don't want to talk about it. Like a hissing cobra, Gunslinger tension gets ready to spring. Now he asks, where the hell is Spawn? And Jessica knows she needs to tread carefully. Look, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry on this, but I assure you, you're not the only one dealing with personal pain. It's been tough on all of us. Don't touch me, Jessica. Get away from me. Just trying to help. Like at the bar, why did you ask me to leave? I needed something. Wasn't going to get it with you there. That's why I asked you to leave. So we go back to the bar, and so we're just like, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me. You were always reckless. You know him, Harvey, says Jessica Priest. Get out of here, girl, and take everyone here with you. And don't think about changing. Meaning, go, don't go into your she spot form. That'll blow your cover. Okay, people, all of you need to leave now. So they all evacuate. And Silverton's like, boy, you know that gun can't hurt me. I'm not like the others. I know. And I don't care, says Javi. Clint cocks the barrel, blasts him off. He turns into a two-faced evil deviant. And Javi's just like, I just want to confirm if you were still a deviant. Now what you want to do. Before they decide... Worldborn means to protect his boss, and protect him he does. Gunslinger pistol whips him, but this brother's like, hell to the knob. Punches him, throws him across the bar, and Javier's like, man, this is taking too long. I want some rumble, you know? So he loads his pistol with necro bullets, bullets that can stop a herd of elephants and deviants. He blasts it off, and this is funny. Like, even though you don't see the full detail of it, you can tell he clearly blew Wilbur out of, just out of his own shoes, literally. As body parts ooze down the wall, Gunslinger learns they're not all deviants, and some are just actually humans, like the, like the brother Wilbur. Reckless is stupid. It's amazing you lasted as long, says Silverton. I'ma make sure I remedy that, and he turns into whatever the freak that is. And like, and they go after it. He coils them up, strangles them up, and that is it. But you know what? Gunslinger is about to. 
cut through this pain in both ways. Literally, that's all he could do to untangle himself. Takes off his hat, grabs the knife, and just slashes away and keeps slashing until you cut your enemy down to size. Do your worst, says Silverton. Go on, because there's a hunter like me ready to take my place. I don't care about them, says Gunslinger. You're the one in front of me right now. And what Gunslinger does next catches Silverton off guard. He drops the knives and Silverton's like, what, you gonna go at it raw now? You gonna go at it bare hands? Like, where's your weapon? You need weapons on me. But he lunges at him full speed. And that's what Gunslinger exactly wanted him to do, catch him off guard. Lunges at him full speed. I'm tired of being hunted. Why is it so easy to track me? His grip tightens like a vice as he compresses his head. Then he continues his dialogue. Clown, Dakota, the angels, how'd they find me? Because I save all of you the freaking effort. And he squeezes hard as this guy screams in pain. By hunting you down first and Winston, my message will be clear to all of you. And he goes tired. He goes tired. That's right. I know who your master is. And he can't even talk his pain right now. He can't even talk what he wants to know. Gunster could just piss. Everyone's tracking me. And I don't like that shit. So he squeals harder. He squeezes harder. And pop. Like one of those cherry tomato pops, you know? <laughs> Just pops his head, explosion, screams, mixed with the noise of destruction, filter out a little longer than silence. Gunslinger exits the bar and he tells Jessica it's time to go. And Jessica's like, you're right, I hear the sirens too, but I got to tell you, I don't understand what you did or why. As they go back into the present and Gunslinger Spawn tells her, because something happened to me and I'm going to kill everyone who had taken a part of that. Then I'm going to find a way back home and stop what actually happened. And that's why he needs Spawn, because Spawn can help with that. And Jessica's like, okay, I'll take you to him, but you need to do me a favor. Yeah, what is that? And she tells him, I'm putting a group, a team together, one that'll fight this damn war we're in, and one that'll keep Simmons alive because we all need him for something. Join me until you figure out your way home, and I'll make sure you get to spend plenty of time with Spawn. And that's where we end this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number eight. Gangster issue, the back and forth flashbacks, I love it. In Batman Killing Time, the back and forth flashbacks was way too overused in my opinion, but I was hoping there's a bigger payoff with that. In this case, the story flowed and I'm all for it. I'm sick with it. I I just dug the freaking book. As always, I'm always looking forward to the next issue of Gunslinger Spawn. And that request right there that Jessica that Jessica Priest did to Gunslinger Spawn is a tie to the Scorch. Hey, we did all the reviews on the Scorch and we're gonna continue to do all the reviews for the Scorch. Awesome issue, awesome read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now before we get into this issue, we're just gonna do a quick summary breakdown. Jessica Priest, AKA She Spawn, attempts to recruit Javier, known as Gunslinger Spawn, to join her fight. But getting close to Spawn and figuring out a way to get home is all he cares about. That is until he realizes that the one of his enemies from the past is standing right in front of him in the present day. So we get a flashback of Javi in New Mexico, 1849, 1200 miles from their destination. California's northern reaches where the gold rush had settlers and miners all swarming hoping to make their fortune. In years to come, they will be dug as the 49ers we get Javier his wife and his kid and they're all on this hunt for this gold rush but to reach that destination would take months of grueling conditions as well as a constant need for resupplies Brennan Lino close to the Mexican border could provide that we see his wife and his daughter and his girl and his daughter you know carrying the groceries Javier goes to this you know, horse smith, they said, hey, shine my horse's shoes, take your time, I can use a bit of rest, all while trying to get rest to continue on with their gold rush. But his peace is short-lived. A man burges into the room, where can he hide? He's asking for his hide, but his blood is soaked in his shirt. Get away from me, boy, says the man. I need an empty stall and a six shirt. You got one? No, but I, the door slams open like a storm, nearly blowing it from the hinges. And it's this mysterious figure with the hat looking sinister and ready for some action. You know what bothers me the most about you, Billy Joe? It's your attitude. I told you not to run, didn't I? And he hunts him down. But you wouldn't listen to me now, would you? Now I got no choice but to slit your throat. And he does that. And Gunslinger Spawn, or Javier, before he was even Gunslinger Spawn, he's like, um, um, you know, like, he's just, he just witnesses action right in front of his very eyes. Brother turns around like, what are you doing here, mister? What are you going to do about it? He going to tell the sheriff what you saw? That wouldn't be wise. But that man was unarmed. So are you, says the figure. And Javier knows this is not good. Amy, get back. It's not safe out here. One throw from it, and that's all it took to punch of a heart of Javi. That man throws a knife in the back punctures his heart goes down for the count wake up javi wake up as his lady cries and a bam shoots her point 
blank. He wakes up in some dive hotel. It was all a dream. She spawns like, yo, man, you said her name again. Justin Caprice, you said her name again. You said Amy. And Javi's like, do pack your things. We need to go. It's two in the morning. Where the freak are we going to go? I said pack up. As they pack up and leave, Jessica Caprice like, yo, man, let me ask you something, Javi. You're so hyped up wanting to find Simmons. Why didn't you ask him what you wanted to ask him the last time you guys were together? This is a reference of Spawn's universe issue number one, or the one shot, which you can feel free to check out that review. Link, I'll put the link in description or the YouTube link in the description. And Javi's like, I didn't know you was valuable then, but now I do. So the rest of the ride is silent. Though Jessica questions whether the new team she hopes to form will ever materialize, and that's a call to the Scorch, which I do review all the Scorch issues, but it's really cool how all this is coming together. But for now, she'll play along as they go to have Javi's weapon stash. Jessica tells her, we'll need to travel through the shadows. Do you know how to do that? And Javi's like, I have limitations, but I've used the dark before. Close your eyes and I'll show you. So she closes her eyes for two seconds. And within those two seconds, Javier stands behind her now. Javi somehow moved from down the hole to another position while transforming into his full gunslinger persona. Never blink first when you're in a fight with me, honey buns. Well, he didn't say that. I just thought it was like appropriate to say or something he would say. Plenty of enemies found out the hard way. So how do you change yourself? And she's like, okay, I'll show you. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I know what she's doing is just to distract him. And Gunslinger gazes at her beautiful body. Now, darling, close your eyes. And he does that. And when those two seconds pass, more than enough time for Jessica Priest to shift costumes and wedge her razor-sharp blade to his throat and slam him to the ground like, I could do the same thing, and I could have killed you just then and now. Why? Because I showed you my breast assist? That's all it takes for you men? Pathetic. Yeah, that's all it takes is some breast assist. And it hurt, and it worked. She spawns like, Javi, we're at war. Do you get that? You make one misstep and you're a dead man. And I'm not worried about you. It's the others that'll pay for your stupidity. Lucky for you, I'm a loner. Don't need to worry about that, says Gunslinger. Hmm. Well, we'll see. And she spawns like, and one more thing. I know you desperately want to get back to your own timeline, but if it were me, when you meet Simmons, I'll stay on his good side. Compliment his leadership and military brain. Hell, tell him how powerful he is. He likes that kind of stuff. He's like, well, sorry, that ain't my style. Fine, suit yourself, says she spawn, and the shadow swallows them both. Meanwhile, in New York, at the end of the day, Mr. Almonte says goodbye to his secretary. After several long meetings, this executive looks forward to simply relaxing and watching a little television. But as the elevator jerks to a sudden stop, he knows his evening might not go as planned. He tries making a call to the security, but his cell phone won't work and everything goes black. No one's coming to your rescue, Phil, says Spawn, as he takes him to the site, undisclosed location, and starts getting some you know, some torturous interrogation going on here. Phil, stop your theatrics. I'm not in the mood. What I'm more interested in is knowing why, when I asked about who's running your operation, where those files are, all your associates keep throwing each other under the bus. And no one knows what the hell's going on. But when I visited this guy, he somehow knew nothing, even though I was told he knew everything, says Spawn, and says, you, Mr. Almonte, you are the one that should be the most threatening. So I have one question, who is freaking lying? Everyone's freaking lying, but everyone knows, like a shark swimming in blood tank to war, these men that Spawn has gathered know their next breath may be their last if they're untruthful. She spawned a gunsling like, hey, we hate to crash your party, and Spawn's like, you shouldn't be here. Not my choice, says she spawned, but the cowboy wanted to come with me to meet you. I knew you couldn't be trusted, said Gunslinger. Trusted, says she spawned. He's here because you screwed up, not to mention you opened that time hole. This guy, you brought him here. He wants to know how you can send him back to his time because you opened up that time hole, Spawn. Spawn's like, man, I'm busy. Can't you notice? Now, the lady asked you a question, Simmons, says Gunslinger, now answer her. And if you're busy, too busy, I could take care of that. These hombres, they special. And Spawn's like, hmm, and you blowing smoke in my face too? They have a boss that I'm trying to find. Trying to find? Interesting you're at war, you don't know who you're fighting. Watch this, and Gus goes into action. Hey, he asked one of the guys, hey fellas, you important to your boss? Yeah, kind of. And just blast him, blast him, blast him, ends them all off. And he's spawning. She spawns like, what the freak are you doing? Are you insane? I was hunting their boss, not them. And Gunster's like, I did you a favor. Because the moment their boss finds out they're dead, he'll come looking for you. That's how you flush out a weasel. Spawns like, bro, I am military. You don't tell me how to do my job. And Gunster's like, go ahead. Beat me instead of your enemies. That's a real smart move on you, Simmons. For years, Al Simmons wanted nothing to do with heaven or hell. Now their destruction is all he obsesses over. Not for himself, but for billions of humans ignorant of the danger sitting on Earth's doorstep. Stop this! Both of you says she spawned. This is how we'll win. They want us at each other's throats. You know, Spawn, your military, we have to band together on this. We have to work together instead of working individually. That's how we're stronger together. You know that. And it takes everything he has 
to not say something back. And Spawn's like, not if you guys like Yosemite Sam part, part of it. I love the Louis Tune reference. But that'll accomplish nothing. And whether he likes it or not, Javier needs Spawn on his side. At least until he gets what he wants from him. Leaving him with the only one sickening option. And he has to kiss ass. Then teach us. I need to learn. I can't write. I can't read. But I can fight. I can fight real good. And here you could be a great leader because of your power, your military skills. We all could use him. We need you. Apparently, he's heeding to Jessica Priest's advice. Though Javier does not believe a damn word he says. And that's where we end this issue. I love this story and how it ties into the to the Scorch. And I love how the meeting is very believable, very plausible. And I just love the rawness of Gunslinger Spawn. Like, oh, you want their boss? I'm just going to blast them off. They'll come to you. That's how you flush them out. Just absolutely love this issue. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Now, I just gotta explain myself a little bit. I know it's been a week since I uploaded any comic book content, and also, I'm a week late to uploading this review, too, because usually I like to upload Spawn reviews, Gunslinger Spawn, King Spawn, any Spawn reviews first as a new comic book releases on Wednesday. But we were doing San Diego Comic Con, we were hosting, we were vendors there last week, so I was exhausted, needed to rest up. It was an amazing experience, but with all that being said, now let's get back into the content. Gunslinger Spawn is there just watching Jessica Priest and Spawn just duking it out in argument. He's been enduring their conversation for over 20 minutes. And it's been painful listening to Spawn and she Spawn trying to convert to each other to their perception on how to best move their toward in their war. Though both may have sound strategies, Gunslinger is disinterested in all of it. What he cares most about is trying to cozy up to Spawn, a man who he has zero respect for for the sole purpose of using him so he can return back home to 1859. Nothing else matters beyond that, and he'll do anything necessary for him to fulfill it. Now they keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with all this argument, and he's had enough and Gunslinger needs to take a walk. And Spawn's like, yo, hey, and she Spawn's like, yeah, where are you going? And Gunslinger is, you know, you gotta enjoy the comedic timing with Gunslinger because he does add some humor to it. He tells, y'all sound like Cal's birth. I need to give my ears a rest. Hold up, hang on, says Spawn. You got the wrong impression. None of this is your fault. You're here because of me. I get that. But if you're ever going to have a chance on getting back home, you need to be alive when that when that happens, you know? So Spawn's like, so until I figure out a way to do that, you need to be safe. And Gunslinger's like, yo, man, I can handle myself. Don't worry about me, bro. And Spawn's like, I'm sure you can, but let's help each other out. So Gunslinger's proposes, well, how do you reckon we do that? And Spawn proposes by teaching each other what we know. We can meet up later, go over everything later, but you ever take out one of my informants again, I'll make sure you never get back home. And that's referencing the last issue. And as Spawn leaves, Gunslinger's like, yo, man, that man is moodier than the trap possum, you know? And she Spawn looking good and dangerous tells Gunslinger, well, I told him you're a loner, so he's probably figure out the best way to get rid of you so he's probably thinking I should pretend to like you to get rid of you and Gus is like yo quite the opposite I don't like him but I freaking need him to get back home but it's just kind of funny how this is playing out so later on we transition to from Gunslinger and she spun over here into the base of Terry and Gunslinger or Terry and Spawn and Terry is talking about this database overload and ionic energy fields with necro mapping sequencing and some of the tracking targets disappearing randomly and all these hell spawns making appearances and Gunslinger doesn't understand a damn word he's saying and Terry's like don't worry when I run my energy flows not all of them are emitting necro waves so all these hell spawns are surfacing and Gunslinger's like, what the heck is all this? I see these screens, new hell spawn surfing up. Is that ninja spawn right there looking badass? And then Terry's like, well, some of them are not all hell spawns. Some of them are hostiles. That word hostile, it's a word Gunslinger knows all too well. Tens of thousands of lives were senselessly lost because of the degrading definition given to that word. But what's far more confusing to Gunslinger is how calm these two men appear given that they're surrounded and who knows how many of them, how many of those enemies are traitors. So Terry tells Gunslinger, your experience could really help us, I think. So he sees all these hell spawns, and you guys are just cool about it? They don't notice Gunslinger's hand slowly sliding down his holster. Duck! It's an ambush, and he starts shooting at the computer screens. <laughs> because at this point, from 1859 to modern times where you're seeing live action on the computer screens, Gunslinger can't tell what's real, what's not. So back in near Mexico, the far Mexican border, we see these guys talking about the plans already in motion, and that plan is to get Gunslinger spawn into their grasp. But obviously, they don't grasp the magnitude of what of opening up the dead zones would do, so they have to call upon Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe is in his office and they tell him, hey, we got a private matter to discuss. This is a right of our boss. You got to go. So Ratcliffe leaves and it's, it's this feeble man inside this wheelchair. And this guy tells him, though, I'm curious about you ever retiring. I want to see if I could delay that, that decision for you as a certain matter came up that you might be interested in. And Ratcliffe's like, what? 
What, ma what matter? It has to do with the man who wiped out your family. Gunslinger? Yeah, he's here and he's here now. You're lying. And he gets up and he starts morphing into this. I want to say this like Conan the Barbarian Hellspawn looking thing. And his anger grows. Radcliffe morphs into this broken man into something much more menacing. I think this is Conan the Barbarian Hellspawn fashion. It looks really good. Tell me where he is, he says. So back in the lab, they're all going back and forth. It's not real. Why'd you shoot it? Well, that doesn't sound reassuring. Ghost is like, what? So they're all just computer screens? Yeah, for God's sake, you're compromising this operation. So she spots us, your actions keep compromising us, making us targets to those tracking hell spawns. Then get him off your track. You know how, says Gunslinger? No, says, the, says she spun. Well, grab a piece of heaven. I know where that is. Well, how do you suppose we get that? Well, one of us uses your shadow powers and takes me there. How about you, Spawn? You up for a big fella? And Spawn's like, okay, I'll bite. Spawn somewhat admires the fact that Gunslinger doesn't seem intimidated by anything or anyone. So Spawn begins to tightly wrap the cowboy in his cape, squeezing from beneath him. And as it, within a heartbeat, they morph. Is this the place that's perfect? Instantly, Spawn feels though his powers are draining from him. What are you doing, says Spawn? Don't you feel it? Your powers are gone. All of them, just like mine, thought we'd veer off our path just for a spell away from everyone. And as we're here, come on, you know it's a dad zone. We're mortals and sires, so you're just Simmons and I'm just Javier. And it's time to find out who the better man is. But it's gonna be a fair fight as Gunslinger drops his holster, drops his guns. His weapons are all to the ground. He's grown tired, everyone calling him weak. The hell spawn with the fewest powers. So he vowed if he ever were to have his powers taken away from him or he became normal again, he'd always, he'd always be able to defend himself. He studied cowboys, the Spaniards, and the tribal wars, and he mastered all those skills again and again and again, watching closely how they each killed one another, how they fought, and the weapons they used. They combined everything he learned until he mastered all of it, honing those skills in a dozen ways to maim, murder, or mutilate his enemies, and him and Spawn go at it for the next three or four pages, and this is the same art panel right here. Even though Spawn is CIA trained, it's kind of diff it's different for a CIA trained specialist to go up against someone who can adapt fighting styles in the, in the Switch. But the thing that drives him most isn't that he can't defend himself that's the easy part it's that in spite of learning all those skills he wasn't able to defend his sister amy so spawn's like whoo all right i'm taking it back i'm kind of surprised i'm impressed i could say the same says gunslinger so they both have each other's respect and they continue sizing each other up and they're like okay we're good right so a simple gesture with the handshake seals the deal though neither knows each other has a hidden agenda of their own and if faking a friendship gets them both what they want then they'll both gladly play that part. And Mark's like, man, I hope those two aren't kick kick kicking heaven's ass right now. Well, they're kicking some ass, that's for sure. So Spawn's like, I'll join the group. Jessica doesn't need to know that yet, but there's something I still need from her. And Gunslinger's like, yo, do what you need to do. With each step from the dead zone, their doormat symbiotes reanimate once more. But I got my own business to attend to, says Gunslinger. There's some folks from my past, evil folks still alive. I'm fixing to pay them a visit. But I said we need to get a little piece of heaven first, so how about we do that? Just point me in the right direction, says Spawn. And they do that, and seconds later they go to where Redeemer's at. Hey Goldie, we need to talk, says Gunslinger. <laughs> It's <laughs> Redeemer's piss. Yes, Redeemer knows both these men and they know him, though his explanation of how doesn't quite make sense. The rest of the conversation centers around common enemies and how creating an alliance might benefit each of them. They also conclude Jessica can't know they already made their commitments that a new team has just been born. So they're all in agreement, they're all in alignment, and this is the beginning of the Scorch. And you can catch up with that with the Scorch. Issue number one, I'll put the card up above, as well as link in description, as well as I did do a first story arc review of the Scorch, which is all the hell spots teaming up for all, for an evil that's bigger than any individual hell spot can handle. And that is the end of this review. Personally, I love this issue. I enjoyed the heck out of reading it. Is it one of the better, one of the best gunslinger spawns? No, it's not. But at the same time, it can it gets the story moving not as much in advance that i'd like to see it but at the same time i dug it and i wonder if this is a key issue because i don't know who this guy is because is this a, is this the first appearance of ratcliffe this guy does look like conan the barbarian mixed with hell form hell spawn form you know but link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection with that being said in the previous issue, an enemy from Gunslinger Spawn Pass emerges, and it's this brother with the white hair, this Game of Thrones, Conan the Barbarian, Hell Spawn looking mofo, and he has one of Sp uh, Gunslinger Spawn's angels, well not his angel, but an angel that Gunslinger Spawn fought in the previous issues with her wings ripped out from her back, 
and this guy is like, hey, give me some information what you remember about Gunslinger Spawn. How did you find him? Tell me. I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you, says he, because you slaughtered my family. Well, they had it coming. They didn't talk, but you have the opportunity to talk, and your wings being ripped out is a death sentence. So, talk to me, talk to your boy, and then I'll spare you. So he taunts her some more like your insanity. You feel a growing, don't you? You can survive with a single wing, can you? Say it, help me, she says. And he's like, that's what I wanted to hear. We get this overview shot of how menacing this guy is. And he's like, okay, calm down. You suffer enough. Tell me what you remember. How did you find Gunslinger Spawn? Oh, you know, you've been traumatized. It's expected because she can't remember too much. So he gives her a drink. Whatever this drink is, we call it memory juice. Whatever this memory juice is, I want to taste it. But not that I want to remember. I just want me some drink. But anyways, jokes aside, it takes a few hours, but the injured warrior recalls just enough to be useful. Her recollection was fragmented, but the stranger, whatever he call, whatever we call this brother, he has what he came here for. And he goes in and he relieves her, her misery. And she's like, what are you doing? Putting you out of your pain. But you said you help me. I am. I'm giving you a quick death and he snaps her neck and this brother is just nothing to be messed with. So meanwhile in this panel, Gunslinger Spawn grows impatient, waiting, but finally Jessica Priest is there. She's Spawn. And she's like, we could have met somewhere else. Why did you have to meet in the middle of nowhere? This is too damn far. But he's like, yo, I don't like people too much. Okay, well obviously that's clear. But here, catch. Some of the gold coins you fetched from your past got you a lot of cash. You're going to need this. All right. I had to BS the banks because they don't like a lot of big transactions. But that money, that money in the bag, that's your new best friend. You can't get anything you need without it. So protect it with your life. All right. And I know you're not too big on long goodbyes. So take this. When it flashes red, it means I need you for another Scorched mission. I'm like, OK, so this is taking place after the Scorch. I like how these stories are parallel with Scorched and King Spawn and King Spawn. I like that, you know. So he's like, all right, peace, you know. But you know what? He will he will use that device that Jessica Priest gave him when it's time for another mission, or when she contacts him and it beeps, he'll 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 respond. You know, he's cool like that. But when it does beep, he'll travel through the shadows to get to where he needs to be. But for now, he prefers the open roads as he navigates to Newcastle, Wyoming. Now, what's in Newcastle, Wyoming, you may ask? Well, it's Taylor, of course. Remember Taylor from the previous issue? And if you're just watching this video for the first time, you're more than welcome to watch the first story arc of Gunslinger Spawn issues one through six. I'll put the card up top and also the, the link in description. And if you're new to this channel, I appreciate you for watching and thank you for watching. So Taylor's from the previous story arc and he gets approached by this girl. Hey, you want to play with my dog? Because he is uninterested in this party. He doesn't want no part in this party. Just let me play my video game. You want to play with my dog? And he wisely bites his tongue and he walks away. He's been a lost soul since coming to Newcastle, feeling out of place and disconnected from everything. School, friends, family, and it's only getting worse. And you see these kids picking on like, hey moron, you too cool to mess with the Dakota kids? Well, go, go play with your loser nobody, friends you loser. So he go walks away and back around a corner of a boarded up building, he finds some respite. And all of a sudden there's gunslinger spawn. You need a light? Javier, Jesus man, you're here. Jesus had nothing to do with it, boy. <laughs> you know I gotta put a little country mix with Gunslinger Spawn, right? Relax, it's just me and you. But I was wondering, I'm needing some help, and the best person I could think of was you. So you wanna come on a trail with me? Yeah, I'll be your Robin to your Batman. And keep in mind, how Taylor forgets that Gunslinger Spawn's from the 1800s. He knows nothing of those modern references. He's like, oh yeah, forgot. You don't read on the reference, so where are we headed? But for now, the answer for the time being is nowhere in particular. So Gunslinger asked Taylor, I need your help to find certain people, just like your dad, whose family had a big part of hurting my family. Why, says Taylor, so you can kill him? Yep, yeah, that's the plan. Why? Because it took someone from me. My sister, her name was Amy. Most of my life, she was the only family I had, the only one I could talk to. They did something to her, and they made us both do something you can't even imagine. Those memories wash over Gunslinger once more, and he gets up. He's like, yo, Taylor, I'm just going to take a walk, all right? So Taylor peeks, it, peeks into the back, but he's like, man, we're rich. Look at all this cash. But before he can celebrate that reality, that reality thought lasts for a short, brief, fleeting moment before reality comes crashing down literally by this way of this new villain who knocks Taylor back, crashes into the tree, knocks him 20 foot back, and this villain, imposing brutal villains like Taylor, that's your name, isn't it? You think you're just gonna crawl away? Is that your plan? Don't be absurd. Stand up and fight like your life depends on it because the truth is, it does. And unfortunately, Taylor isn't able to get to his feet. His left leg has been injured from the crashing fork. You hear me? Says the villain, stand up and fight. Get up. 
They said you're a gunslinger. I mean, it's not clear how this brother finds it, but whatever the angel tells him, hey, that's all he needs to know. Taylor tries speaking, but his throat is being crushed. Is that true? Is that true? You know where gunslingers at? Foop! Gunslinger throws a knife in his hand. And careful now, that knife could have went through his hand and to Taylor's face. But for the sake of comic book world, it didn't. Touch that boy again, you lose the other use of your hand too. Taylor, I need you to get behind me now! Gunslinger takes a step towards his enemy like a bear protecting its cubs. Taylor is off limits. Limping severely, Taylor does exactly what's told. Tell me, big man, why should not I kill you where you stand? You! says the villain you killed my family what the fuck is his name right now but we'll find out shortly if i'm dead i sure they deserved it hobby shoot him don't just stand there shoot him get to the bike taylor turn it on if i'm not standing in three minutes go as far as away as you can as the hulking villain approaches gunslinger he stands resolute and it's like dude this guy is big and i don't know how many pounds of muscle he has on him but you know what this ain't gunslinger spawns first rodeo three minutes you got that Gunslinger lands a blow to his midsection with all of his might. Now his first blow is meant to disable his foe instantly, but the, vil but the villain barely flinches. That's never happened before. And he backhands him like a ragdoll. As he pulls his blade out, Javier curses himself because you should have put that knife in this guy's head when he had the chance because his enemy is smart enough to block his own face. Now like, he ain't gonna have that chance, son. My body's all you can get, if you can get it. And what other options does Gunslinger Spawn has? He throws a knife to his face, pierces his hand, but you know, it don't matter. So he wallops him in the face and Gunslinger's like, whoa, man, this guy's got some chunkers. This guy's got some blow. This is like Hail Spawn Tyson and knocking me out. Woo! Knocks him out again. Fight back, damn you, says Taylor. Ha ha ha, says the villain. Because the villain knows he's got his ass where he wants him. On the plate, his laughter is soon drowned by all his primal house. You coward, said the wolves again? Are they going to eat me alive the way they did to my family? And Gunslinger responds like, hmm. I remember that night. You're an offspring. You're a winter stone. I am, says the villain. Guess we both got pulled into that time shift. That means you know where the others are. The ones I'm looking for, says Gunslinger. All the enemies in his past. Now it happens simultaneously that the wolves launch themselves at Winterstone while Gunslinger, for some odd reason, continues shooting at the ground. He's shooting at the ground to create a huge cloud of dust, momentarily blinding the two opponents. But at some point in the battle and confusion, the villains had enough. He disperses the air with one thunderous clap, going Hulk status. Clap the hands, get the dust out the way. Gunslinger Spawn was looking for an advantage and he got none at that fact. And whatever Gunslinger was trying to do, it didn't work. So this brother puts his hand on Gunslinger's throat, rips his head off the capitation, and that's where we end this issue. Damn, that is a brutal ass ending, and that is a plot twist that I did not see coming. If I recall with Spawn, a Hell Spawn's true death, it has to be a, I believe it has to be decapitation ahead by something magical or something of equal value, and I don't know. But how is our boy gonna recover from this now? Is this issue worth the purchase, even though I spoiled most of it for you guys, if not all of it? Yes, man! Support the art, support the industry. This is really a gangster issue to add to your comic book collection. Also wanted to mention, I do have a personal YouTube channel, Nathan Hatchy, Your Comic, which is an educational uh, YouTube channel that I do as well. Link in description under my solo.to link if you wish to check that out. I do these reviews with coffee, so if you wish to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in description. I'll never be opposed to that, but this is a gangster issue. Link in description description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. With all that being said, in the previous issue of Gunslinger Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn comes face to face with an enemy tied to his past, Radcliffe Winterstone, an encounter that doesn't go quite as planned. And as he decapitates Gunslinger Spawn's head, as we saw in the previous issue, he taunts that he did this and he flexes about it. Look, look how weak he really was. And I hate that it took so long to finally prove it as he weighs Gunslinger Spawn's head across Taylor. So what do you think, boy? This is what happens to those who mess with my family and what happens to those like you that help men like him. It's over for both of you. And he takes a stick, stakes it to the ground, and puts Gunslinger Spawn's head on top of it. Plops it there. Game of Thrones style. Desperate, Taylor makes one last attempt for survival. Though, he knew his odds were nearly zero. You thought you could run away, boy? As Radcliffe puts this red magic rope around him, ties him up, hog style, brings him over, and Taylor, all he can do is call out Javier's name. That's not my name. I'm a Winterstone. Do you know what that means, boy? 
but he didn't really call him boy. But you know what? This is only the point where you can only imagine what this brother's gonna do to Taylor right now. But Gus Lee Respond goes up from behind him, tells him to leave that boy alone, and shanks him in his eye. And it's Gunslinger's name, the improbable, it seems, Javier's alive, driven almost to the point of insane level of retribution. He restricts the flow of air into his into Winterstone's lungs. He doesn't want this brother breathing. And to make sure that this villain's brain doesn't know that's happening to him, he creates another point of extreme pain, destroying an eye socket. This is to confuse and distract the brain from knowing what it should and what it should not react to. I mean, damn, savage Gunslinger Spawn. What the hell happened? Oh, I, I, I know what happened. I'm going to keep going on because Gunslinger Spawn, it is established in Gunslinger Spawn issue number six that he does have the power of deception. So Gunslinger Spawn shoots Taylor a look it's a meaning of get the hell out of here but Taylor doesn't get far as Winterstone blasts him away you devil he calls Gunslinger Spawn toss him to the side you're dead you're dead how is this possible take a look says Gunslinger and he, and he looks at the head on the stake and it's a wolf's head most believe Gunslinger Spawn's powers are weak but the piece that's always forgotten is his power of deception but for that power to work it needs something real for its effect this is between us, says Gunslinger. That animal had nothing to do with our war, nor does that boy. This is between our families. Go ahead, waste your magic bullets as this Radcliffe Winterstone puts his power shit up and doesn't want Gunslinger Spawn using his bullets. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, okay, I don't think I'll waste my bullets. So the fight's at a stalemate for right now. Elsewhere, the sworn enemy of a thousands of heavens foes surveys a recent battlefield. And this took place in Gunslinger Spawn in the last issue when Radcliffe went savage on all these angels trying to find the whereabouts of a uh, Gunslinger Spawn. And this guy goes by the name of Savitar. He is accustomed to arriving to the battlefield late, but he's seeing that his warriors are shredded and he doesn't like the cruelty of their demise, which makes him all the more mad but the anger he knows serves no one instead he swears an oath to himself these brave souls will be avenged he takes a feather from the wings off their back puts it like in his cape or whatnot as a way to remember a reminder of what he's fighting for and what must be done and this brother's gonna do it like so many others he's been hunting for gunslinger but as he leaves the blood spilled landscape he knows someone else got here first soon he will make his existence known to both Gunslinger and those that got in the way. So he's out for Gunslinger's ass and whoever did this mess. But we'll see what happens about that. What's the matter, cowboy, says Winterstone. Why not murder me right now? Or don't you know how to do that unless women and children are involved? Provoking Gunslinger. The few you let live told me about you. How sick, how evil you became. Children, you kill children. Those were my brothers. No, they weren't, says Gunslinger. They were dogs like the rest of your family. Wow, says Winter. So you actually believe that? Don't you? You've got the you have you have no idea how insane you are. Holding his power shield after taking a brutal beating is beginning to wear on Winterstone. Gunslinger chooses to bide his time wisely. Is that what they told you, says Gunslinger? That I did it for no good reason. Just wipe them out for the heck of it? Well, they lied to you. You ain't gonna believe me, but here's the thing, says Gunslinger Spawn. See, they attacked me the first time around. Had no clue why, so yeah, we fought, but I didn't kill him. Not that day. It's one of the great regrets of my life. And he goes into the montage, the story of the history of all that happened with Ratcliffe's family. You know why they attacked me? They wanted my buffalo skins, the two I had. I thought I scared them off. Instead, they went after the family of natives that sold them to me. They took all that they had, every last skin, but that wasn't good enough for them. So they had to slaughter those poor folks too. A few of them even had a hand letter in corrupting my little sister. So that wasn't enough, they had to corrupt my sister Amy, says Gunslinger. So I did go after them when I found out all that they did. You damn right it did. That's when I killed them. Starting with your father, Boom! your brothers, Boom! your uncle. Boom! All that I could find, I let the relatives of those names deal with the rest of the clan. Yes, they felt since their women and children weren't given no respect, they decided to even the score. But right now, none of that matters. What does matter is some of the Winterstones got involved in what happened to my Amy. So I'm betting you also know the names of a few others who were involved. I like those names, says Gunslinger. The weak adrenaline now fuels Winterstone's next power surge. With anger pumping through him, he can't believe this man. The one responsible for the murdering his family said that it was justified that somehow Gunslinger spawns a freaking hero. Get the hell out of here. For seeming like an eternity, 
our cowboy Gus Spawn takes on the full brunt of the energy. And so when it finally stops, so his enemy can catch his breath. Gunslinger drops to his knees. He too needs a moment to recover. So does Winterstone. As he raises his head, ready to continue once more, he's caught off guard. He looks up and he sees Taylor taking the branch and smacking it across Winterstone's back. And it doesn't even phase the brother. And Gunslinger feels bad and curses himself. Why won't Taylor just listen? Leave him alone. Go! But what's wrong with him? But as the Gunslinger Spawn summons one of the wolves to attack and bite the wrist of Radcliffe, his presence complicates everything, meaning Taylor's presence, putting all of them at risk. Javier, Gunslinger Spawn, needs to suffocate his enemy. Now, he reaches inside, channeling his inner beast. As he begins to howl, his loyal pet feeds off his master's emotions. Like some shark thrown into a frenzy from fresh blood in the water, Gunslinger thrashes about in blind rage hammering his appointment over and over and over and over again. Okay, you get my point. It almost becomes an excessive use of force, but he won't put his enemy out of misery. Not yet anyway, just not yet. But that's gonna happen because he learned a Winterstone son grew up and began his own reign of terror. A son who thrived in slaughtering as many natives as he could. Babies, children, women, they were all just savages to him. Javi, stop this, says Taylor. You don't got to do this. It's gone too far. And but Javier, Gus like Spawn don't want to hear none of that. The only clue attribute to the mass murdering was his long white mane. So no, Gunslinger won't stop. In the name of Amy, not until he eliminates everyone involved in the decimation over 400 innocent lives. Javi's bullets can't kill this monster, but he's going to keep shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting away. Delivering pain is their purpose. I want those names, says Gunslinger. It takes time, but eventually he gets it. Six more names added to a list of those he already knew about. That's 11 in total. Let's go, says Gunslinger. Gunslinger spawned to Taylor. Get you someplace safe. Then what, says Taylor? Then I have things to do. And that's where we end this issue as Gunslinger spawned and Taylor ride off or walk off into whatever the next journey gonna happen next. <laughs> absolutely love this issue. At first, I thought I was getting played as a reader when Gunslinger Spawn appeared magically uh, after Winterstone ripped his head off, but it does make sense because it does establish that Gunslinger Spawn does have the power of deception as he did with Clown in issue number six. You can check out the review on Gunslinger Spawn issue number six or Gunslinger Spawn the Brutal uh, First Story arc issues number one through six. I'll put the link in description in the card up top. It does establish that. I absolutely love this issue personally. This is probably one of my most favorite issues of Gunslinger Spawn to read. Then again, maybe not the most, but one of the most favorite to read. I absolutely loved it. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. With all that being said, Gunslinger Spawn issue number 12. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy, don't be stingy. Here at Rated Comics, we do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. And also, this video is sponsored by coffee, so if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in the description. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking the video and subscribing to this channel. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.